Thank you so much. So, so you can get it without me in the camera, please give one big, very round of applause to Pastor Arthur. Thank you. Well, I absolutely love your country, love you. I have been in so many states and one day I can be in high mountains, the next day in a desert, in another day in an ocean. I mean, you got such a variation. The beauty of this country is, is fascinating. It's, it's so beautiful for me to see. You know, when I'm traveling around, I would quite often ask Americans a very simple question. Whose country is this? I mean, that's the first thing we all have to ask ourselves is this is just a country or a land of Bidens and Clintons and Obamas or the lying Fauci's. Whose country is this? Is this Newsom's land or is this people's land? You see, as you can tell, I grew up behind the Iron Curtain. I grew up under the boots of the Soviets. I've seen this movie before. And unless people will rise up, this movie doesn't end well. So I'll give you a little bit of a background to understand what is happening to you and your beloved democracy or republic. Poland, before the Second War, was one of the most prosperous nations in Europe. I know that's hard to even understand what I'm saying, knowing that the country was completely destroyed by the Nazis and later on by the Soviets. But Poland, after a liberation, focused, the Polish government focused on rebuilding the country and rebuilding economy. And they were very good at it. All the resources, all the power was focused on rebuilding the country. And within a few years, they managed to become a very successful nation. That's what a mixture of family, middle class, capitalism, working hard, loving your country, loving your family, loving your children does to a nation. However, there are people that hate that idea. You see, they hate, their, they hate your freedom. They hate that you are able to do things. They hate that you can be su more successful than them. You know, there are many losers around us. There are many people that are very miserable and they absolutely hate anyone that rises up and succeeds. So when you look at the BLM, when you look at the Antifa people, even at the first glance, you know they're, they're absolute losers. They're terrorists. And they show it, the way they walk, the way they believe, the way they, they dress themselves, and they dress themselves like gangsters. You know, I refer to them as Chihuahuas. Because he, here is what I learned about Chihuahuas. First of all, don't quote me on this, but I do not believe that Chihuahuas were created by God. I think there's some kind of a weird mixture between a, a rabbit, squirrel, and a cat with a little bit of a dog. Um, and all of that combined together. And here's what I learned about Chihuahuas, that it's very, very hard to house train them. So wherever they go, they poop around, they pee all over the place, and they're extremely annoying. They don't know how to bark. They think they're dogs, but they're not. They think they're lions, but they're not. They're Chihuahuas. And they go around pooping and peeing and annoying everyone everywhere they go. Is that not like Antifa? Yeah. That's exactly what they do. Yeah. They think they're lions, but they're cowards. they're cowards. They love to come with the big numbers and beat innocent women and children in strollers. I was invited to your Portland, Oregon. I was invited for one hour for one rally just to give a speech. So we were told for a month that I will be assassinated. They were saying, oh, bad things will happen to you and you will not like it. Actually, I loved it because I love United States of America. This is a beautiful country. It's not just their country. It's your country. And I am here at your invitation. So I'm enjoying every part of your country. Uh, you know, every part is not off limits just because some chihuahuas are saying don't come. Actually, when you say to a man like me, don't come, be sure of it, I'll extend my stay. So I said, I'm coming. We showed up and we were viciously attacked. We had women and children. We were not prepared for a war, for a fight. And there were about 40 Antifa uh, dressed for war with shields and weapons and pistols, tear gas, uh, fire bombs, so, you know, the flash bombs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and they came and viciously attacked women and children with tear gas, maize, and uh, 
and the bear spray. And the Portland Police Department asked us to move before the event happened to a little bit different part of the park that we were supposed to be for our protection. But what happened was the Portland Police Department gave us into, into the beast of the belly, the, the belly of the beast. They gave us to the, to the Antifa and they sat in their cars and they watched when women and children were attacked. When the equipment and speakers were taken and thrown into the river, they sat and they watched, smiling. So I am very grateful that you have honest police department. I'm very grateful that the police are actually doing what they're being paid to do, to serve and protect. So kudos to you police officers for doing your job, because I mean, seriously, that's your job. We pay you for protection. And if you're not capable of doing that job, then resign, quit, and we will hire somebody else that will actually do the job. If you're not, That's right. if you're not able to serve and protect as a politician, I get it. Not everyone is cut for the job. Resign, it would be a lot better. I call them in Canada unessential services. Resign so we can hire a man that will serve and protect us because we hired them. So Portland Police Department, Portland uh, City Hall allowed this vicious attack on us. But we stood our ground and I'm telling you what I saw. I saw something, something so beautiful that you only can see stuff like this when you're under pressure, when you're under attack. And quite often when I preach in the churches, I will tell them that Jesus shows up in a fire. If you want to see Jesus Christ, you got to go through the persecution, prosecution. You have to go through the difficulties. He shows up in your difficulties because in your difficulties, difficulties in your fire, if you will, he deals with your enemies. And that's the story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. When they went to the fire, the first people that died were those that threw them into the fire. So God deals with your enemies when you are willing to go and pay the price, if you will. So we went, we pushed, the enemy showed up, but I looked at the women, you American women, you're beautiful, you're amazing, you're, you're lionesses, it's awesome. And the men, wow, what a, what a sight it was. They stood in front of a 40 armed gangsters. The police, those cowards, important, chose to do nothing. And yet those pastors or those Christians stood the ground. And you know, the Antifa took a maze, they took a, a bird spray and they sprayed it right into their face. And you would say, and I know because I was sprayed before, that's very painful. And you see nothing. And you would think that they're all going to start running away and, and it's over, right? Antifa won. No, those men stood the ground. Yeah, we all were crying. But the beauty about a bird spray or, uh, you know, um, a tear gas, it cleans your sinus very well. So I had a little bit of a sniffle. And um, after that, I'm telling you, it, fix you for, it will fix you for a few weeks. So if you're having a problem, show up where Antifa is, they will help you. They're actually a great service if it comes to cleaning your from inside out. So that's what they did. I'm very grateful that they uh, helped me out because I'm traveling so much, planes, sometimes two, three times a day, I am in a plane. And um, by the way, if it comes to the virus, I think about it, they're saying that it's so deadly and I have been hugged by tens of thousands of people. I have boarded about 80 planes in two months, two and a half months. I should be dead already. And, and according to them, but I'm healthy as, as, as I was. And thanks to Antifa, I, they cleaned my sinuses. So I'm, I'm, I'm good actually, I'm really being treated um, uh, well in your country so we stood our ground and those pastors stood their grounds and this one particular pastor, was the black pastor? he was um, no the black was there as well the black pastor uh, uh, David but yeah, also David. there was uh, uh, Lou pastor Lou and he was a big guy and he stood his ground he got mazed and oh he was mess he was mess um, I would be mess as well but the wind just took it a little bit uh, to the right and, and didn't hammer me as hard. And they gave me a gas mask. Someone gave me a gas mask. 
but they did not tell me that in order for this to work, I have to unscrew it. So I was suffocating for about a minute. Wait a minute, this doesn't work, this is crazy. You know, so I give it up, so it's not working. Later on, they find out I did not open it up, so that's why it was not working. That's how well equipped I am. You see, I face my enemies face to face, a hard on collision, because my God is greater than their God. You see, that's the thing. That's the thing about chihuahuas. In the end of the day, they're just chihuahuas. He is extremely annoying, pooping all over the place, peeing all over the carpet. But they're just chihuahuas that are thinking that they are. You see, this is a real dog. That's a dog. Chihuahuas are not dogs. Believe me. Um, I think they're demon possessed. You know, they're so annoying. If I would see a chihuahua, if you have one, if you have a chihuahua, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Uh, if I would see one, I'll probably be casting out devils out of it. The, the Antifa spirit out of Chihuahua. So we stood our ground and we did preach. I did deliver my message. We stood our ground. And people are asking me how to fight this tyranny, how to stand up. You see, one day at a time, one event at a time, one, one event when you can say no, no and get out. I mean, in the end of the day, that's what it takes. People standing up against the bullies, because what I know about the bullies, they will keep bullying. They will keep coming for your sandwich until you say, no, that's my sandwich. My mommy gave me that sandwich and I'm not giving it to you. And you say, no, no, and get out. Get out of my church, get out of my White House, get out of my uh, you know, capital here, get out from my restaurant, get out. I mean, this is what it's going to take. We stood our ground, we preached, we delivered the message, and this is what I said to the Antifa, I'm coming back. I was supposed to be here only for one hour because you did what you did. I guess you love me so much, I have to come back. So I did, came back for four more days. Four more days. You wanna know how to win? You stand your ground. In the Bible it says when you've done everything to stand, stand. Yeah. That's how you... If, if there was a thousand Antifa, and I remember this one time when about 800 Muslims came to our church. And they were demanding for us to shut down. I had an Israeli flag at that time. It says take it down or you're dead. Or chop your head off. We stood our ground. We would not do it. And one day they called me. They said we're going to kill you. Uh, we're coming to kill you. So I gave them my home address and I said, see you in 15 minutes. <laughs> That's how you fight it. Because the moment you're terrified, the moment you give in to fear, you're shot, you're out, you're done. You will be running for the rest of your life. The only way I know how to deal with bullies is to stand against the bully and say, no, no. I'm not permitting you to do this. I'm telling you, get out. So I came back. On Sunday, we had a huge event with, uh, with the worship. Thousands of Christians showed up. Then we came back on Tuesday and we did another event. Twice as many Antifa showed up and they were dressed for war. But you see, this time I had about 40 patriots and they were dressed for war. On Saturday, we were not prepared. We, 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 we didn't expect it to be attacked viciously like this. We were expecting the police, the Portland police to actually do their job. But they didn't. So next time we came prepared. We came with our own police. If those, if those gangsters calling themselves police officers will not protect the innocent, then we will protect ourselves. And that's the key. Every man in this country should rise up and start protecting his loved ones. In the Bible it says when a man that knows how to do good and chooses not to do it, it's a sin to him. And then in the Bible it says, when a man will not protect his own, provide for his own, he is worse than a Gentile. A man, American man, gotta rise up. And American women have to rise up as well and push this great evil away. On Tuesday, we were attacked again, but I was well protected. They were pointing at me and says, we want him. And every time they moved, I had a line of defense standing ready for a kill. I mean, that was a beautiful thing. And Antifa, when you see bullies are cowards, when they see that you are a real man and you stand your ground, they're terrified. Because they're operating only using fear and terror tactics. 
when they meet a real man or a real woman they don't know how to deal with that they, 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 they don't know how to deal with opposition. So every time they moved, the Patriots moved. And they did not do anything. And guess what? Antifa is only paid three times a, a month. Only for three days a month. So the fourth time we did it, they did not even show up. <laughs> they did not show up. So I, I guess they run out of money from sorrow. I don't know what was the deal. I kind of miss them. Because when you see them coming in a big numbers, you got your audience, especially as a preacher. You know, it's hard to preach to an empty field. But when you got hundreds of people around, that's my audience. So I would preach to them, straight to them. And you know, when they don't show up, I, I kind of, I kind of miss them. In a weird kind of a way. Like you miss a dog that just pooped all over your carpet. You kind of love the creature, but you're annoyed with the creature. You know, that's, that's my love relationship with Antifa and BLM. So I kind of miss them. And then on Wednesday, we did it again. Remember I told you, I said to them, I'll come back for four days. On Wednesday, we did it again. No one showed up except the governor of Oregon, Katherine Brown, that witch. You know, she's a witch. She's a practicing witch. And she showed up to curse the land. I was preaching that. I'm flattered. Because that tells me how terrified they are of a man of God. You see, I don't have guns. I don't have weapons. But I have the truth. And what I know about the truth in the Bible, it says the truth will set the captives free. What I know about the truth, the truth is like a weapon. It's the most powerful weapon. The truth. Truth stands on its own like a pillar. But the lie lie needs manipulation misinformation terror fear more lies and that's exactly what we're seeing right now we're seeing tyranny tyrants are, have taken over our free society so thursday we did it again friday we did it again and no one showed up we stood our ground in the park we preached the gospel we preached and we shared what god put on our heart that's how you win when they say to you, you have to wear a muzzle in a store, just don't. Yeah. The worst right. thing that can happen to you is they will kick you out or That's call the right. cops. Yeah. I mean, so what? I've been ex escorted before. Just yeah. don't put one. You're not dogs. And here is the story. I came out of our church just to see if, if those devils would show up. And from time to time, I would just look around and see if, if there is anyone, uh, you know, a threat uh, you know, I'm a shepherd, and as a shepherd, I defend my sheep that God entrusted me. So I'll come out and then check out what is going on outside. And I saw this dog coming, just like this one here, and he was, he had an owner on a leash. So the dog took an owner on a leash into a park outside of our church, and the dog was so happy, he was free. He was running around and wiggling his tail. He's so free. And then he looked at me. And we had an eye contact. And the dog spoke to me. You know, dogs can talk. That's why Antifa yells at you all the time. You know, chihuahuas do talk. So this dog talked back. And this is what this dog said to me. He looked at me and says, this is weird. I don't understand. I took my owner on a walk and I'm free. And he is muzzled on the leash. <laughs> Everything is upside down these yeah. days. Yeah. People are muzzled. Yeah. Dogs are free. <laughs> Figure that out that you would ever imagine a time in history that animals will be freer than humans. Yeah. Wow. Right? Oh, it's incredible what, we're, what, what we are witnessing right now. So, how to fight this? I decided to stand up and follow the word of God. In the Bible it says do not forsake the gatherings of the saints. In the Bible it says lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In the Bible it says sing to the Lord praises and worship. He dwells in the worship of his people. All of those things they forbidden during the lockdowns. The government came to me and they said you have to shut down the feeding of the poor. I said well they need me more now than ever. If we're in this great crisis, then this service, this soup kitchen is needed more than ever. 
I'm also a pastor. Those people are desperate. They're suicidal. They're turning to drugs and alcohol like never before. Yeah. They're hungry. They are without hope. They need hope. If I don't give it to them, they're going to whack your head. They're going to whack your mother's head. They will break into the cars. They will break into the houses, into the garage. They will get the necessity supply this way or that way. Let me do what I'm good at. Let me feed those people. Let them, let me give them hope. No, you have to shut it down. That's the law. I said, well, then uh, hell with your law. That's where your law belongs. And I kept doing what I was called to do. I kept feeding the poor. And I was the first clergyman in the country to get a COVID ticket. And I was hammered with 12 officers and I was told more is coming, millions of dollars, and you will be arrested. I said, not the first time, not the last time, I'm sure of it. So that's how we were dancing. You know, Polish people love to dance. And we dance polka together. So if you're picking a fight with a Polish man, I, I hope you're ready for a dance because we dance and we will keep dancing with you until you're dead. So uh, we know how to dance and we know how to dance for a very long period of time because Poland is the second nation on earth that disappeared from the map of the world only to resurface again after 130 some years, just like Israel. We were destroyed, pillaged, taken by a number of most powerful nations, and yet here we are, standing. Yeah. Polish people also, I don't know how much you know your history, I hope you do know, yeah. that independence was won by an assistance of Polish generals, Kościuszko, Pułaski, and it says historically that if those generals would not help the fight for independence, Things could turn a different way. We have this something in us, just like Americans, freedom, liberty in our bloodstream. We love freedom. We love liberty. And anyone that comes to steal that away from us will stand up and fight. That's right. And that's what I see in American spirit. This is what I see here. And it's incredible. It's touching me. It's touching me. So those generals fought 1776. You got your declaration of independence. Woo. You won your freedom. The forefathers, the founding fathers were the ones that did something extraordinary that I think Americans have forgotten. Yeah. When God looked at Israel, he looked at Israel and invited Israel and says, I want you to be my nation. But Americans did something different. They said, God, we want you to be our God. And they invited God into the nation, America, was founded with God. When you read the independence, the Declaration of Independence, when you read your constitution, God is everywhere. It's all over this. It was like he wrote it down. His desire is for a man to be free. How dare this lying cheater Fauci to come and tell you you're not free. How dare those Obama pedophiles and Clintons, all those evil, wicked people, Newsoms and Browns and the witches to tell you Americans that were born free That's right. that were taking your rights away. How dare they? Okay. You know, who do they think they are? Those uncircumcised Philistines that should defy the armies of the living God. Who they think they are? I'll tell you who they are. They're Chihuahuas. They're Chihuahuas. And who in the right mind? I see behind a huge dog, like a monster dog over there. If I would bring that ugly creature Chihuahua into that dog and say, you bow before that little squirrel, I don't think this dog would do it. I think it would be like, snap, and it would be over. There will be no Chihuahua. Chihuahua no more. Newsome no more. Who those people think they are? Seriously. Again, who, who's, whose country is this? So you see, when I emigrated from a regime, totalitarian dictatorship from my country, and we had to escape on a boat. We had to sell everything that my parents worked so hard all their lives just to get a ticket on that boat. Because three times they denied us visas. We sold everything. We came with nothing. We emigrated with nothing except our clothes. That's right. And we emigrated to a new world. You see, remember how this country was called? It was called the New World. Why? Do you know even why they called it the New World? Because they said this will be a world without persecution. 
This will be a world when a man can work hard and achieve something. This will be a country that a man can do whatever. The sky is the limit. And they are stealing that away from you. So let me give you a little bit what communism and socialism is. In order to subdue a nation, you have to eliminate the opposition. What we're seeing right now is the greatest elimination of opposition ever seen during our lifetime. Small and medium-sized businesses, the people that run them are highly patriotic. The middle class is highly patriotic. Why? Because they're very grateful to the nation that gave them the opportunity to achieve something beautiful. They're also highly family-oriented because most likely most of them, they are running family business. So the father, grandfather started and I just took over my, 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 my mother, my father, and I want to give it to my children, I want to give it to my grandchildren. So the middle class is family-oriented, God-fearing, patriotic, grateful to the land that has blessed them so much. Antifa and BLM, they're losers. They have nothing. They're being paid by the government a few hundred dollars a month, so they got nothing to do, and they are chihuahuas. They just want to pee and poo everywhere they go. Right. But middle class people are different. We don't want to go around and cause trouble. We're busy living our own lives, and we're happy to do so. We're not looking for trouble. We're not looking for fights. We're looking for a life that we can pass on to the next generation, a country that is so beautiful, a dream, the American dream. If you know anything about communism and socialism, this, or fascism, this category of people has to be eliminated because that's the opposition to tyranny. They're highly educated, well-traveled, they have been and they have seen things. They love God, they wanna serve God, they wanna be free, they don't wanna be bothered. So that's the attack that we're seeing right now globally. Elimination of small and medium-sized businesses. I'll prove it to you. Have your Walmarts been ever shut down during this craziness? No. Ikeas, no. all those mega stores? Why not? Because we're in the middle of the greatest pandemic and the virus can go left and right and kill, right? So the more the people, the more likelihood that the virus will attack and kill people. The safest place to be is in a pop shop across the street when you can be just there by yourself or two people. That's the safest place. So their narration, their rhetorics is just not working or it does according to their wishes, but not is not following their own science, okay, in quote. It doesn't make any sense unless you know what is the game plan, unless you know what they're doing. They're killing, they're destroying the middle class. They're eliminate, eliminating the opposition. They want the power to be consolidated into the hands of few. That's why you got Amazon becoming trillionaires and yeah. those people are making tons, billions upon billions of dollars. And the shops left and right are close, the small ones, the family owned ones, the 80% of this country, the middle class is being eliminated. In Poland, under the Soviet's dictatorship, there were only two categories of people. Yeah. They were extremely powerful, 50,000 communists. They were ruling over 36 million Poles with the iron hand. If anyone from the 36 millions would rise up, it would be crushed by the communists. And they would say it that we are in this together. We are in this together. We are here because communism and socialism is the best of the best and everyone is equal everyone is the same remember what they're saying to us right now you will own nothing and you will be happy yeah. right yeah. and at the same time they're buying your houses and your properties it looks like they want to be extremely miserable and they really want you to be happy because they are accumulating wealth left and right while they're telling you that you will own nothing and you will be happy so i guess they want to be very unhappy by stealing your houses and your businesses. If you don't know what's going on, you don't know what the plan is. And this is the plan. This is a simple elimination of opposition. Middle class people also are, if you tick them off, they can hire a lawyer. They can push back. And here is my solution to your problem. And I've seen it with my own eyes. Every one of you and everyone that is listening should file a lawsuit. Don't go trillions of dollars. 
go 50,000, 100,000 Americans. Don't hire a lawyer. Right. Do it yourself. I've done it a number of times. Plug their system. Crumble their system from inside out. Flood their system with millions of lawsuits, left and right, for everything. Every one of you should file at least 10 different ones. You kick me from the store, I'm filing a lawsuit for discrimination. Because you see what we're seeing right now is, is, um, is a repetition of history, like it happened during the civil rights movement, uh, segregation. That's what it is. It's, it's a new form of segregation. And also, the law is very clear. It says you can have an exemption. If they're not, if their policy, their stupid little house policy are crumbling or trampling on your constitution, file a lawsuit and do it again and again and again. Don't go for millions of dollars. Do it $50,000. Because I know that uh, you have a very similar law that we have in Canada. So when you file a small claim court, you don't need a lawyer. You can represent yourself and, and you can do it at very little cost. But they, I'm telling you what they will have to do. They will have to hire a lawyer. And now imagine if they have to hire a lawyer, they probably have an in-house lawyer. It's not a big deal. But if they have a, a thousand people filing a lawsuit against the same place, that's a problem. That's a big problem. And it makes the news. And that's a problem they don't want to see because now suddenly the message is being sent that put, people are pushing back. And that's the simplest way to do this. Plug, destroy their system from within and do rallies. Go to the city hall. If your mayor is a devil, then take a thousand people, two thousand, and demand his resignation. And park. Bring your barbecues. Bring your coffees and say, we're not leaving your city hall until you resign. Imagine. And, 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 and at the same time, invite more thousands of people to join you for uh, the biggest picnic in the country. And just stay there. I mean, you say, well, that's unrealistic. Because we have to now commit our time. We have to now invest. Listen, tomorrow you will have nothing to invest. You don't understand. They're coming for everything you have. If you don't push now, if you don't designate a month of your life now, yes, I understand you will not be able to work. You will not be able to provide for you. I get that. But I'm telling you, they're coming for everything. So now I'm telling you, lose something in order to preserve everything you have. Because tomorrow you'll have nothing. Those people will never stop. In 1939, Poland was a very prosperous country. The Germans attacked Poland. And let me just add something to you. That the first victims of Adolf Hitler, the first victims of the Nazis, were not the Poles, and were not the Jews, were the Germans. And if you think that your own government cannot turn on you, you're just not paying attention. They already turned against you. Every politician, every single politician that has participated in this should be charged for treason. Every one of them. That's right. From the little aldermans or councillors, whatever you want to call them here, to the mayors, to the governors, everyone. 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 Yeah. Whatever. If they have betrayed the trust of the people, the people should rise up. It says, is that not what it says? We the people? Yes. Is, that, is, 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 is that in Afghanistan? Uh, that's a constitution of Afghanistan or America. So why are you not standing up for your own law? That's the highest law of the land. Stand for your law and start making those devils accountable. And you say, well, that's not possible. 19, well, let, let me just give you a little bit of a story. 1939, after the devil, the Adolf Hitler did the damage to his country, annexed Czechoslovakia and Austria and was ready to strike, in 1939, he attacked Poland from one side, Soviets, Stalin attacked from another one, divided Poland in half, pillaged, murdered, raped. In 1945, when you were celebrating victory over the Nazis, Polish people were sold by American government and being given to the Soviets. From 1945 to 1989, we had a constitution, you know that? People don't know history. They don't know that this is just a simple repetition of history. They've done it before. They don't need to reinvent the wheels. They're just repeating the same thing that worked before. Wow. 
From 1945 to 1989, Polish people had a constitution. That was the highest law. Poland was the second country on earth, right after, right after the Constitution of the United States of America. Poland got its own constitution. We were electing kings. Polish people were electing kings. And that's very unique. That's why I'm saying to you at the beginning, we are very alike. We love our liberties. We love our freedoms. We want to live in a country that we have a say. From 1945 to 1989, Poland had the highest law in the country. And Americans come to me and they say, hey, we have our constitution. They will never do that to us. Listen, people, they're doing it already. They're doing it. And you're letting them. Why? Why is Fauci still there? It's beyond me. He was proven to be a liar. He was caught to be a liar, and he still is pulling the strings. I don't get it. I don't don't understand. He has been caught lying to the population, and he's still an expert. He's telling you muzzles do not work. See? A dog took this guy for a walk. The dog is free. The guy is muzzled on a leash. I mean, it's a perfect... And he's outside alone. It doesn't make any sense because he is a Fauci follower. Yeah, yes, he, lo- yes. he follows the science. Yes, the science that in the morning says masks do not work. And in the evening it says you must wear three. Oh, that science I'm talking yeah. about. But you see, for a man like me, I grew up, sir, in Poland under the Soviets. The same tactics. In the morning they would tell you one thing. In the evening they would tell you an opposite thing. And... They would force you to believe whatever it comes out of their lying mouth. See, Fauci, I think they're hiding him because his nose is so big right now, like Pinocchio's, that he doesn't fit in a regular house. Those are liars. They're lying to you. Why, why in the right mind would you let them? So, in 1960s, I think it was 1965, in a city called Poznan, Polish people had enough. But here is the problem, and I see the same problem here in your beloved America. The workers decided they're going to push. They're going to fight the Soviets. And they organized big rallies, and they asked the rest of the population to help them. They asked the students, would you come and help us? And the students said, said no. No, we're not going to join you. So the workers went on their own. And they were beaten. They were destroyed, some were murdered, some were arrested. And then 10 years later, 10 years later, the students came to the workers and they said, now we are ready to come and join you. Will you come with us? And the workers were bitter because those guys didn't have them the 10 years before. And they said, no, we will not join you. So the students went on their own and they were hammered beaten, tens of thousands arrested, some murdered. In 1981, and I saw that with my own eyes, and I think that's why God sent me to your country. Because I am a witness. I've seen it with my own eyes. The power of the unified movement called solidarity. We are in solidarity movement right now. We are in solidarity against tyranny. And the same thing was happening in Poland. And the people finally got it. We have to come together. We have to do this together. We cannot allow them to keep pillaging, stealing, raping, murdering, and no longer we're free. How come 50,000 communists are ruling over 36 million Poles? Wait a second. There's more of us than of them. Why are we serving them? Who is Newsom? Excuse me. Who is this guy? Like who he thinks he is? An uncircumcised Philistine. That's all. We know how the story ended with a big giant. Oh, man, he may puff his muscles. He may have his, you know, guns around him. But seriously, 40 million Californians would eat him for breakfast and they would not even bone. Not even a bone would be left. Those people think they can get away with a murder because people are not making them accountable. 36 million Poles finally decided to take it to the streets in 1981. 
and I saw that. Yes, tanks, machine guns, fires, very uncomfortable. Millions of people on the streets, and this is the message they sent to the communists. We will not work for you anymore. We're not your slaves. We will paralyze the entire country until you resign. Until you step down, not one poll will work for the tyrants. And they paralyzed the entire system. No one went to work. No one paid taxes. No one did anything. And within two years, yeah, it takes time. Yeah. It takes time. Unfortunately, you have a choice either to put your time and money now or lose everything tomorrow yeah. and wait for 10, yeah. 20, 30 years. And maybe your children will rise up. Maybe your grandchildren will rise up if you're not willing to pay the price and pay, and pay for it. 81 and 82. Polish people pushed and pushed. Tens of thousands were arrested. Some were murdered. Maybe some of you will have to die in order for your children and your grandchildren to have a free country again. But they were willing to go all the way, and they did. And they won their country back. Poland became the best democracy on earth. In 1989, the Berlin Wall has fallen because of the Poles. Yes. <laughs> Hungary, because of Poznan, they got their freedom, and then the Soviet Union collapsed, and the Iron Curtain got broken, because some people decided to go all the way. But there is another story within the story. In 1981, they also did something extraordinary that many people forget. They rallied, rallied I think there was a million people or so, and this is what they said. They said, God, we cannot do this on our own. The enemy is too powerful for us. But God, if you can come, if you will come, if you would come and help us, then no one will be able to stop us. So what they did, they went to their knees and they said, God, come, come upon this earth, on this land and help us. And God did. And God did. And Poland was free. So just because you have a piece of paper called Declaration of Independence of Constitution of United States of America means absolutely nothing to the tyrants. They don't care about your piece of paper. You have to care about your piece of paper. You see, it's up to you. How much do you love your country? How much do you love your children and your grandchildren? Are you willing to stand up and, and do something? And that's, that's what we're doing right now. That's something. But that's just the first step. Because I'm going to finish my talk. And some of you will say, that was okay, it was good, or whatever, it was a waste of time, whatever. Whatever the end result is going to be, I'm going back fighting. But you have a choice to take this to the next step. And I'm just telling you how Polish people won. And they have won the same way through centuries, fighting the Austrians and the Ottoman Empire, the Muslims. That's how we fought the Genghis Khan, the Mongolians. This is how we fought uh, Vikings. You know, Poland was the only country that stopped Vikings. We were the only country that stopped Ottoman Empire. We were the only country that stopped Genghis Khan. You know that? Yeah, we are subdued. We are beaten. We are destroyed. But we always rise up from the ashes. Americans, you got to rise up from the ashes. They have been destroying you for decades. This is nothing new. This virus is just a pretext to finish you off. They have been undermining you. They have been implementing key people into the powerful positions. They have been doing this for a very long time. Educational system, brainwashing your kids, taking over your health system, bringing socialism, fascism, and communist hybrids. That's what it is. A combination of many things that worked before, and now they're pushing it hard on the free and American people. So now the question is, what are you willing to do about it? So now you know. Another question I would like to ask you is, how big is your God? Is your God bigger than Fauci? Is your God bigger than Obama? No is your God bigger than, uh, uh, you know, uh, those Pinocchios in the government? And another question is, very as important as how big is your God? Who do you think you are in God? Because in my Bible, he calls us sons and daughters of the Almighty King. In the Bible, it says, one can do a thousand, but two can do ten thousand. That's right. And also, once he said to me, you and me, we are always the majority. 
Even if the whole world goes nuts, even if the whole world goes communistic, me and my God, we're still the majority. In the end of the day, when you are with God, you win in the end. But you have to keep fighting. You see, if you don't fight, you've lost already. But if you keep fighting, there is hope that you will win. And if not you, your children or your neighbor. Someone will win if we come together. Enough of division. Do not allow the division. Yesterday we've done an event and I started to look at this. There was a little bit of a commotion. A man fell to the ground and hit his head so hard that he stopped breathing. And I said, oh no, I just showed up and there is already a casualty. There's already a dead man. So I prayed and I said, God, like, I don't know what's happening. He's not breathing. He's not moving. And I said, he looks dead. This guy is not breathing at all. I said, raise him up if, you, if needs be from the dead because this is not good. This is not, look, this is not going to look good for anyone, including the guy that is dead. <laughs> and then suddenly I lay hands on him and he moved. He started to, to, to move again. So I'm not, I'm not saying God raised him back from the dead. I'm, I'm just saying that the guy survived his fall. But because this commotion was happening, police showed up and there was a bigger number of police and the patriots started to fight with each other about something I don't even know, some stupid thing. Please, just because you don't understand another freedom fighter, just because you don't like his style, just because you don't like something, it doesn't matter. Their sword does not discriminate. They hate you. Just like the sword of Islam, does not discriminate. They don't care if you go to the Catholic Church, if you go to the Protestant Church, if you go to the Baptist or Pentecostal, they don't care. For them, you're an infidel. For the politicians, they don't care. They don't care wh which freedom fighter club you belong to. You're an enemy, you're an inf infidel. You're not part of the globalistic agenda. You're working against, do not the allow them to divide you. Even if you don't like the leader, even if you don't like sometimes the way he makes his presentation, who cares? He's willing to stand up and fight. He's willing to put his name out there to be a walking target. You know how many times they try to assassinate me because I speak? We are risking our lives. We're risking everything. I remortgaged my house seven times to do this. We're putting everything in the line because we understand what is going on. And I'm doing this not just for myself. Yes, I would love to be free. I am free in Christ, but I'm doing this for the children. I got three children and I'm looking at them and I have to be able to say that the father did what the father could. I did, I've done my best. I pushed as hard as I could. I give up everything. If you don't want to fight for yourself, fight for the next generation, for those kids you see in the parks. There are kids over there playing. Do it for them. What kind of a nation are you going to leave behind? What is your heritage you're going to pass to the next generation? What is, what is the blessing that you're going to give it to those kids? And one day they're going to grow up, just like I grew up in hell on earth, when the lineups were non-stop, never ending, when you could not just go and buy meat because the government was telling you how much you can buy, the food stamps. I grew up with food stamps. Government, the communist government was telling me how much sausage I can buy, how much sugar I can buy, how many kilos of meat I can buy a month. Do you want to live in a country when some newsome devil is telling you how much burgers you can have a week? Him, like, excuse me, him is going to tell your kids what you can eat, what you cannot eat? Seriously, that's the nation you want to have? I grew up in a nation like that. When, when they heard that there is coffee coming, my, my brother has this famous saying, Canadians, wake up and smell coffee. Because one day you might not have coffee. I grew up in a country that to buy a kilo of coffee, you had to stand in a lineup for three days. I, I don't think you can understand what I'm saying. When I got a chocolate once a year with peanuts in it, I would lick the little bar of the chocolate around and save the peanuts for the next day. When I tell stories about empty stores with only vinegar in them and nothing else, they look at me like I'm an alien. 
because you cannot comprehend the idea you go to Walmart there is nothing in it how can you you've tasted a little bit of communism when the people started to fight for toilet paper yeah. <laughs> under communism there is no toilet paper I don't know why it's weird I remember us cutting a little pieces of propaganda machine. You know, the only thing that propaganda newspapers are good for is toilet paper. <laughs> However, it cuts your bum and it gives you a black ink on your bum. That's the minus uh, of, of this whole thing. But I remember cutting little pieces and breaking them and breaking them like for five minutes to make it soft. That's communism. It's an ugly business communism, fascism. Communism, socialism, it's here, all around you. In your White House, in your city halls, in your governor palaces. Now you know what the problem is. Now you know what the solution is. Now you have to have that courage. And that's why what I do is called, they call that courageous faith. Because we have to have that courage to do what's right. And we have to be willing to pay the price to do what's right. Are you willing? And that's the question. How big is your God? And I, are you willing to do what's right? Plug their system with lawsuits. Every time they kick you from a store, bring another hundred friends. You see, I don't know how many we have here, but now if one, let's say you, you go to a store and you're kicked out and don't go. Wait for the cops. Let them and videotape the whole thing and say, sir, I am exempt. The law says I have a right for a medical exemption. That's the law, sir, that's the law. I'm showing you the law. And please respect my rights. This is the law. You are a law enforcer. Respect my rights. If he escorts you out, get 50 of your friends the next day and do the same thing and let the cops escort you all out. Don't fight them, don't oppose them, don't resist them. Just stand your ground, do it peacefully, don't call them names, except Gestapo, Nazi, yeah. <laughs> get out. You got permission to do that, psychopaths, but nothing more. And 50 people next day file a lawsuit. I'm telling you, within a week, they will change their inside policy. Then attack another place and another. That's how you fight them. Coming together week after week and giving information is not going to do it. We have the information already. We know what's cooking. We know what's happening. Now we gotta act upon the information we have. Yeah. We gotta go out there and do it. And then, grow in numbers. Do not fight, do not, anyone that fights in sight, kick him out. Kick him out immediately. I do not put up with stuff like this in the church. If you want to fight, this is not the place. Go and join Antifa. You will fit perfectly there. Here, anyone that comes here, we have a bigger fish to fry. When we win this fight, then we can go back. If that's your hobby, uh, you know, fighting with other people, that's not my hobby. I fight the devil. I'm interested in fighting evil, not people that are not, they, they may not under, understand what's going on. Do not allow that. That will kill the movement. And I've seen it so many times. So, I did what I did, I kicked them out. For that, I was ticketed. 30 COVID tickets worth millions of dollars, three court orders, two court injunctions, two contempt of court, arrest in the middle of the highway by SWAT team, anti-terrorists, they came to my house, detectives, anti-terrorists, you name it, I face it. But do you see me depressed? Do you see me suicidal? You see me, oh my God, what is going to happen? God knows what is going to happen. I already won. Sometimes I just have to go through the valley. Sometimes I, you know, I'm a hunter. So in order to see some beautiful animals, you have to go through the valley and you have to start climbing the hill. And I'm telling you, every time I'm doing that, halfway through it, I'm sweating like a pig. I'm questioning my own wisdom. And I'm saying, why am I doing this to myself? I, I could sit at home and watch Netflix and do nothing all day. I'm exhausted. My gun, that I probably was carrying it like a, you know, American Marine, it's like a stick by now. Like, I'm barely marching on, ready to die halfway through it. But when I climb the top and I see the beauty that God created, you see, we have to keep climbing. Sweat, 
and difficulties, but keep marching on, keep moving on, because on the top of the mountain, there is this unbelievable view, view of freedom, view of beauty that God created. And the creatures are on the other side of the mountain, but you gotta climb to see them. So I did that. I had over 100 police officers, about 52 police cars at one of our church events, 20 cops on bicycles. We had anti-terrorists. We had special unit with video cameras and telescoping cameras. And then I ended up with 15 more COVID tickets. And then they showed up in our church, the second location, and they did what they did. And they were thinking, that's it. It's over for this guy. But when they arrested me in the middle of the highway, it catapulted me into your country with a story. You see, what the enemy meant for evil, God turns around for good. Whatever they do, in the end of the day, if you stick with God, you win. So if you have any questions, I'm ready to answer some of them. And I, I can keep talking forever. My record is 23 hours. So <laughs> when they arrested me and they took me to three different cells, I kept preaching 23 hours. So sometimes pastors say, well, you have unlimited time. I said, seriously? <laughs> okay, if that's what you want. So uh, real quick, um, Pastor Archer might be able to speak for 23 hours straight. Unfortunately, Cindy, his assistant, will not let him uh, because she said... Tyranny, that, tyranny. That's tyranny. Yes. Uh, so uh, according to her, they, he has to leave in 20 minutes. That means uh, we have a very short amount of time for questions. So raise your hand. Pastor Archer will call you in the answer race. He'll try to. And if we don't hear the question within the first 10 to 20 seconds, we need to move on to lady the next fires. person. This is a lightning round of Q&A. So ready, set, go. The lady was first. I read your Bible because apostles were cut in half. They were persecuted, hunted. 11 out of 12 were murdered. And they could say, well, this is the end of times. Look what they're doing to us, persecuting us left and right. Uh, so we should not preach the gospel. We should not heal the sick. We should not feed the poor. You know what that is? Those people that say that they're cowards and they don't want to pay the price. And they are shifting the responsibility that God has given it to us to say, I am not responsible for the kids walking over there. Therefore, let them die. Let the devil destroy them so I can wait for Jesus to take me home. Yeah. Well, I have a surprise for them. They will not make it. God will not take cowards into his heaven. He will not take people that refuse to fight for those kids over there just because of their comfort or waiting for Jesus to clean the place. We are commanded to go. That's what he says to us. That's why we call it the Great Commission. We are commanded to go. And if Jesus shows up while I'm walking there to fight for those kids, so be it. That's his decision. But let me be walking, not sitting and waiting, doing nothing. If he is coming tomorrow, I'll still preach tonight. Okay, so the question was that some people say this is the end times and the Bible prophesied about it, of course. I, I read the prophecies and uh, we should not do anything because it has been prophesied. And what's the point? Well, the point is that while we have another day, that's a day that we can save people. That's and right. they are worth saving. That's right. Yes, they are. You, he was first and then you were next. Yeah, the best way is action. So what you can do to help me personally in this situation. So um, very easy. Don't just say uh, we like what we heard and move on. I have been hugged by tens of thousands of people. But first of all, hugs will not feed my family. <coughs> Second, hugs will not put a pressure on the government to let me off the hook. Fund them. Fund the governors from the mayors in the province of Alberta. We have a premier, we have a minister of justice, 
flood them with phone calls demanding that the government would let me do what pastors are commanded to do. Yeah. That puts enormous pressure. Also, what you can do, you can phone some of the friendly governors or mayors or politicians here in the in U.S., and they can send letters to our government officials. What that creates, it creates a buzz. It creates a pressure, political pressure. And it sends a message that there is many, many people that are not happy with what the government is doing. And you see, in the end of the day, they love their positions and they want to keep their positions. So if they see that there's an enormous group of people that are very unhappy with them, they might say, okay, it's time to, we made our point, we have arrest, arrested the guy in the middle of the highway, it's time to let him go back home. Thank you. Uh, he was next. Um, so there's a lot of words in the English language I love. Four of my favorite are the former Soviet Union. Um, and a lot of countries have done lockdowns, but the most are coming from the Commonwealth countries, the UK, yes. Canada, England, um, New Zealand, and Australia. Do you feel that that's because historically the dissent has come from the church? So they're coming down on the church, especially yourself. No, I think is because those countries are extremely corrupted. And uh, I believe it because the church failed. As a church, we failed the society because we truly became unessential services. Because look at us. We were more interested in entertainment and motivational speaking and just, just having good time, like a cruise, you know. Church has become a cruiser instead of a battleship. Instead of a, a fisher uh, man's boat going out there, out there and saving people, we, we, tell, we, we said to them, if, if you want to be saved, you come to us. But you see, what I know about people dying, they need to be rescued. It's like saying to a guy that is in the middle of the ocean, well, you know where the shore is, just keep swimming. No, he's, he's dying. He needs you to go with a helicopter or a boat and he needs to be rescued. And that's what Jesus did. That's what the apostles did. The church was on the move rescuing people. Right now, the church is like the Pharisees and Sadducees. They've built a monument and they are telling people, well, if you want to be rescued, come to me instead of going to them. I believe that we are in the middle of judgment. I do believe that God is judging this earth. He's judging the church. And he gave me a vision. And I saw this fence. And I knew that the fence represents the, peop uh, the, the whole world. And I saw people sitting on the fence. And then I saw two hands, a big powerful hands that grabbed the fence. And I knew those hands are God's hands. And I saw him violently shaking the fence, violently. And he shook and he shook, shook. And I saw the people falling to the left and to the right. And when he was done, no one was sitting on the fence. Remember the expression, people sitting on the fence, enjoying the view? Yeah. Yeah. That time is over. Yeah. And he says, when I'm done shaking, everyone will have to make a choice, either me or the devil, either good or evil. You choosing right now. We have been forced to choose. Either you worship Fauci's and Newsom's, the devils, or you're going to worship the true God. If you worship the true God, that means you will go and obey. Because the Bible says that disobedience, it's like a spirit of divination. It's like witchcraft. So church has been practicing witchcraft for a very long time, entertaining people instead of saving people. And I think we're in the middle of the judgment. Hi. Um, first of all, like, I, um, I truly appreciate how strong you are and able to turn this poison into medicine in such a humorous way. It's beautiful. You're, God bless you. But do you have a certain part of the Bible that's your favorite like, verse to, to restore your spiritual backbone that you fall to? Yeah. Um, there is this prophet of old and God was looking around the earth and he was looking for a man or for a woman so he can use. And this prophet stands up and he said, after God asks, who will go for us to stand against the workers of iniquity, evildoers? And he stands up and he says, here I am, Lord, use me. You see, once he said to me, I'm not looking for talented people because all the talents come from him. I'm not looking for uh, a wealthy people because all the wealth belongs to God. I'm not looking for a man or for a woman or young or old. I can use anyone. I'm just looking for someone that will stand up. And I said to him, I'm not your most talented. I would not use me. 
Look, listen to my English. Sometimes I'm wondering if people actually understand what I'm saying. But I said to him, here I am, Lord. If you want to use a man like me, I, I'm willing. Send me. I'll go. I'm not afraid. You see, lions do not bow before hyenas. And definitely, they do not, do not bow before chihuahuas. I'm a lion. I know who my father is. You see, my Jesus is a lion from the tribe of Judah. Uh, he's my brother. I'm a lion. Lions do not bow before some creatures. They eat creatures for breakfast. I started ministries in Africa and I have been privileged to see lions hunt. And I've seen them many times. And I'm telling you, they are peculiar creatures. They're very lazy, especially male. And we have many lazy lions sitting under the trees in Savannah. What we need to do is start poking at them. And I did once. I poked at this lion and he kind of looked at me. He was sleeping and he was not very happy that we were there. And he opened one eye and says, I'm going to eat you if you don't go. And that was good enough for me. I got the message. We need to start poking at the lions. And, and when the lions rise up, I mean, it's over. It's over for the hyenas. When the lion stands up, it's over for the hyenas. Before even it starts, it's over. We need lions and lionesses to rise up. I, when I entered your country, I always ask God, what is the message, like specific message for those people in this land? So when I arrived, I put my feet on your land. And this is what he said to me. Tell this great American eagle that it's time for this eagle to rise up and start flapping its wings. He calls you great American eagle. God calls you that. I was surprised because you're a godless nation. You murder your children. You parade your sin on the streets of this country. You got more homosexual deviant clubs than any other country on earth. And, and you're wicked. This is a wicked nation. However, God has his remnant. You're that remnant. God has his people everywhere. He has his church everywhere. And he's telling this to you and to me. Rise up. Stand up. And he calls you great American eagle. It's time for you to rise up and start flapping your wings. I'll tell you why. Because the eyes of the free world are fixed on Americans. And here is what they're saying. What will the Americans do? What will they say? Will they stand up? Will they fight? They're watching you. Um, the whole world is watching America. What are you going to do? That's how important this fight is. You're the strength of the free world. The world needs you. You came to our rescue during the second war. It's again time for America to rise up and come to the rescue. You can pray for me, of course. Last question. How much do we have? Before, you mentioned before the danger of uh, battles with each other within our movement. Yes. And I wanted to get your uh, assistance in uh, dealing with that because it happens with some regularity. Sometimes yeah, I, I know. It's a disruptor from outside. Sometimes it's someone that really is on the same side. They just don't know it. 
Yeah. So, so you know how to express it. How you deal with uh, disunity and and what to do? You bring that individual to a table and say, "Listen, we probably will disagree on ten thousand different ways about different topics, but if we can agree on one, liberty, liberty for you to disagree with me, liberty. If you can say yes to that, you're welcome. If you cannot say that we can march together under the umbrella of freedom." umbrella of liberty that's not the place for you you have to surround yourself with the like-minded people because that's what i have seen over and over again freedom movements being broken because of egos because of jealousy because of everyone wants to be the alpha dog listen we all have a role to play just just because someone talks it doesn't mean he is higher or better than the person that prepares the food for the movement we all are in this together. We all are as important as everybody else. If that individual doesn't want to, doesn't want to march under the umbrella of freedom, obviously he's not interested in freedom. Then you've got an infiltrator, you, you got a spy. I do not tolerate this unit. That's not the place for you. Get out. I prefer 10 strong, like-minded people than a thousand that will be shooting at each other because the last thing I need is a man that is watching my back, this guy is watching my, my back and he starts shooting at my back. Well, I was not prepared from him to attack me from behind. I was vulnerable. I'm prepared from a front attack from my enemies. But if they are stabbing you from behind, you gotta get rid of those stabbers, you know? So traitors, you cannot tolerate. And if they cannot submit under that umbrella of freedom, obviously they're not interested in freedom. Because I'm telling you, we'll never agree on everything. I disagree with my wife. From time to time, she wants me to come back, like now. Well, I have booked for three more weeks, so I have, we have to endure this, because I made a commitment. My kids, they disagree with me quite often. They would like not to go to school, just play video games. I strongly disagree. But that doesn't mean I hate them and I don't want to have anything to do with them. It's just we see this situation differently. But we are family. Yes, the last one. Piggybacking on that. So I've been very disappointed with some of the responses we've had from, from our religious leadership. Yeah. Okay. Very. Because you have some that are like you, very few like you. Um, I was so happy when I saw your video when you kicked them out of your church. And then the, when Grace Church fought back and won the lawsuit, yeah, yeah. I was so happy to see that they won and beat Muslim and Cal at the county, and they're getting paid for, for that. Yes. Anyway, so I was happy. But those are very few in between. So there's a lot, of, even in the church, where they're making the, a lot of the, the, the followers feel guilty and making them, so it's divisive. So has, has you know, because there's only a few like yourself who have done this instead of, have you considered doing like a Lollapalooza with, you know what I mean, like to where you have people who have made a statement like you, the Grace Church, and having like a big event? Yeah, we're doing big events. I mean, I just saw, we were just speaking at the events uh, with thousands of people. Um, Clay Clark is doing events, a number of big, uh, Greg Locke. There are big events all over the place, but events are only one part of it. It's encouraging us. But now you got to do on a local grassroots movement, on a local, and now you go to a local store and be kicked out. We talked about that. That's how you push from under, because wherever you do uh, at, at the grassroots, empowers us to push this even further yeah. because now if this let's say all of you do this and you send that information to us we're going to spread it all over those mega rallies and yeah. we're going to tell them hey there is this city here in california they did this and this and this you see and they won it's possible and it gives empowers others it gives the wings or the wind yeah. Yeah. to to the sail to keep doing the same thing you know courage is contagious fear is contagious but courage is also contagious. We just gotta keep spreading the right message. So yeah, they're cowards. There are many cowardly pastors, but I, got, I, I wanna remind you that Jesus had 11. The one was the traitor. Yeah. And with those 11, and later he added more, he changed the entire world. So sometimes we feel that we are insignificant and alone and it's just few of us. Listen, Solidarity movement started with few people, and you know who started solidarity movement in Poland? You won't, you won't believe it. 
a woman, a lady, a lady that was kicked out from her work. She started solidarity movement that brought the Russians, the entire Soviet Union to their knees, a lady. Remember this uh, Ross, uh, Rosa, right? She started it and before her was another lady, less known. So ladies, you sometimes think, well, what can I do? Well, you can do actually a lot, you know, when you study history, but you need a support of men. So a woman stands up and pushes and then Martin Luther King Jr. has to come or like Valenza or others to support. That's how powerful you are. Just keep doing what you know is the right thing to do, but you gotta do it united. So bless you, I know we gotta go. So most of you, I, my name is Cindy Chapian and I have been working with Arthur since June and I'm the one who will be working with him after he goes to back to Canada and we are the ones organizing the tour. We actually are planning a sort of Lollapalooza type of thing. So yeah, we are, we're already working on that. Um, I do not do a lot on social media. The powers that be have made sure of that and I just, I keep a very low profile. I am on Getter. If you look me up at Cindy Chapian, C-H-A-F-I-A-N. So at Cindy Chapian on Getter, I am on Facebook. I don't do, a, I don't talk to a lot of people. If you go to Courageous Faith Tour at gmail.com, use that email address. I'm setting up our website so that when this all does launch, you guys will all be informed. Um, we've been going pretty nonstop since June. He goes back on September 22nd. And we're pretty sure what's going to happen. So there needs to be a game plan on the ground. Um, for when that happens. I not only work with him, I work with a number of other national organizations. Um, if you Google my name, most of the stuff that you see is a lie. But I organize the large events in DC in November, December, and January. So that's what I do in addition to working consulting and coalition building on the ground. So get tapped into what I'm doing and I will keep you guys connected with what's going on with Arthur. And just so you know, we've been out in the States since June. I've been doing this since well before COVID for 13 years, and I've never seen the kind of groundswell of support and the growth and the progress that we've made just in the past 18 months. COVID was horrible, but it's also been a blessing because it's flushed everything out. So don't lose faith, do not lose hope. God is going to win, and I'm telling you, there is amazing things happening, not only in this state, but nationwide. So keep the faith, stay connected. Local is important, but national is where we really make it work, because solidarity does work. We are planning, um, if you email me at that email address, I'll also keep you abreast of the other stuff that we're doing, that I'm doing. We're planning a national day of action on September 22nd where we're basically walking away from public schools and keep telling parents to come out of public schools because the public schools are the indoctrination camps of, this, of, the, of the Marxists. So if you wanna know what's going on, I can kind of keep you guys connected to all of that stuff. So Cindy Chapian, and I'm here with this guy. And thank you, Anthony, for having us.